Hey, what's going on everyone? So today we're talking a little coaching. Uh, this is both from the coaching perspective and from the player perspective, how to accept coaching. So advice for, for both sides. Uh, I read the daily coach. It's a, it's an email that I get, I think once a day, pretty much really, really good stuff. And it's talking about the differences between kind and being nice. And although they're related, they are different. And as a player and as a coach, you have to understand both. And so the quote in here, says that the people who are nice to you aren't always being kind to you. And this is interesting. We're going to go over their definitions of what nice is and what kind is. But I want to give you an example that they give. And they talk about how this woman's getting a presentation ready. And uh, she shows it to her friend. And her friend looks it over. And, and, and the woman says, you know, I'm so excited. I worked so hard on this presentation. I can't wait to get in front of the boss and show the boss. And, and so, you know, her friend opens it up and it's like 100 pages. And it looks pretty good, but right off the bat, they look at the cover and, and they notice that there's a couple of typos. They notice that uh, the graph is, is incorrect. And so there's some issues with the paper. But the friend wants to be nice. And she says, ah, it looks great. Like, that's awesome. C congratulations, you know, and wishes her luck in front of her boss. And so her friend there was being nice, but is that being kind? And so let's go over the differences that they say between nice and kind. Because I notice this a ton, or deal with this a ton as a, as a coach. Right. And so, you know, I'm working with players every single day. And then I think back as being a player and receiving messages from coaches. Right. And so here's what the daily coach has to say about being nice. Here are some examples of being nice. So being nice is saying what other people want to hear. OK, so if I'm coaching a player and a player wants to be told, most players want to be told that they're doing a, you know, a good job and they've got a great swing and their arm looks great. And so me being nice would just, you know, regardless of, of what that looks like, what the player's swing looks like or what their running form looks like, just saying, yeah, swing looks great. Arm looks great. You know, fielding mechanics look great, even if they don't. Me just being nice would be saying, yeah, you know, person wants to probably hear that they look great. I'm going to tell them that they, they look great. Uh, it says sugarcoating feedback to make someone feel good. Same, same type of idea, but just not being honest, not being truthful to the player and sugarcoating. It says not ruffling feathers because we don't like conflict. Right? So maybe something needs to be said and you have to have a hard conversation, but you, you, know, you want to be nice and you don't want to ruffle any feathers. And so you don't, you don't tell that person the entire truth and you just try to be to be nice to them because you don't want any conflict. And then it says prioritizing short-term appeasement over long-term solutions. So again, in the long term, maybe having that hard conversation and being truthful with the person will help them. But, uh, you know, let's just keep everyone happy. And it's a lot easier for me, again, just to be kind of nice and say everything looks great. Now, those are all examples of being nice, but are those are those being kind? Are those helping that person in, in the long run? And again, as a coach, I would say no. And this is one thing that I've had to kind of learn over the years. And there's, there's an art to how to be kind while still being nice. But let's get into what being kind is, according to the Daily Coach. It says being a truth teller. So giving honest feedback to the person. So if the person's swing is not very good, not just saying, oh, everything looks, you know, everything looks great. You're going to be awesome. Right. Being able to be a truth teller and tell the person the truth. Now, doing so in, in a nice way, you don't have to be brutal and say, that's the worst swing I've ever seen. You're a terrible hitter. Right. You don't have to be a truth teller in that way. But being able to tell the truth nicely. Right. Second part here, it says sharing what needs to be heard. Again, same thing as being a truth teller. Uh, so what I've tried to do as a coach, and I didn't always do this, is and, and sometimes it's sometimes this is still tough. This isn't easy for everyone. Some people it is very easy for. Some people it's not as easy. But for me, you know, if something needs to be said, well then, you know, I need to say it. And earlier in my career, I probably wouldn't say as much, but but I've worked on that, and I feel much better about being able to tell people what they need to hear. And again, that, that can be hard for, for some people to do because some players do take it. They don't like true feedback. They want to be told. A lot of players I notice want to be told that everything is great, you know, and it's rainbows and it's butterflies and all that stuff. That was a song, I think, by well, Maroon 5. That's a, what a mess that is. That's, I, I know about that from my wife. I really don't follow Adam Levine or whatever his name is, but you know, my wife likes that, that kind of stuff. Um, find, I don't know where I'm going with that. Finding praiseworthy elements while pointing out what must improve. So this is important as well. We used to call it a compliment sandwich back in the day. And so not just continually 
hammering away at all the negatives, negative, negative, negatives, but being able to point out the positives while also talking about the negatives. So finding praiseworthy elements while pointing out what must improve, right? So, right, you're doing this well and you're doing that well, but your footwork is off here and we've got to get you to do this differently and we've got to get you in better posture, right? So not just hammering away at the negative, 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 but talking about some of the positives to go along with those negatives. And then it says being candid to improve future performance. And again, this goes back to a lot of the other things that we talked about, but just being open and honest with players. And so what I do with players and what I, what I explain to them, especially at the beginning of the year, and it's one of the first things I always say is that I say, you know, I have to, I'm a coach. I have to coach you. I have to give you feedback and I'm going to give you honest feedback. I want it to be honest and I want it to be open. And I think that Again, some players take that really well and some players don't. And so you may have to, you have to treat every player a little bit differently sometimes in regards to that because, like I said, some players are going to get their feelings hurt when you tell them when you're honest with them. But I, again, I always try to explain to the player that I'm looking out for what's be- in their best interest and my job is to, is to make them the best player as possible, right? And so some players, you might have to do it more in a one-on-one setting, right? So being open and honest doesn't mean that we have to scream and yell in front of everybody and single players players out. Some players that's not going to work very well with. Some players it might work actually great with. Some players might might be fine with that. Some players might not. So it's understanding your players as well and what each player likes. But um, I always have the conversation. It's one of the first things I do because players have to be able to get feedback from coaches, right? They have to be able to. If not, why why have a coach if a coach can't be honest with you? If a coach is just going to be someone that's just going to be, you know, pumping you up all the time and saying you're great, even if you're not, um, for me, that's not going to help you get, get any better. So I'll end with this. It says, too often we fear that negative feedback will make us come off as mean or ungrateful and conclude that maybe it's best to hold off. But if our teams are going to improve and reach their lofty goals, we can't always be nice. Producing the greatest product possible almost always involves a degree of conflict or criticism. The key is to deliver this with a general compliment, then some specifics, or a counterexample of what must improve. Doing so isn't causing a storm or rocking the boat. It may actually mean we're keeping it afloat. So that's coaching, a huge part of coaching. Hopefully this helps you out if you're a coach and if you're a player, also being open and being willing to hear some of that uh, criticism and not take it personal and understand that coach, these coaches are trying to help you. And I don't know if you've heard it before, but I've heard it a bunch of times. Coach will say, you know, when I stop talking to you and stop coaching, that's when you should worry because that means I don't think I can get through to you or you don't accept my coaching. And so you haven't made any adjustments. And so why bother? I'm going to go coach somebody else else, right? So that's when you should be worried, when coaches aren't coaching you anymore. Um, You should be ecstatic to have a coach that wants to help you and wants to help you get better and is willing to have those uncomfortable conversations with you to help get you there. So that's all I got. Hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any comments or questions uh, down below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. We'll talk to you later. If you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season, this is essential for you. Matt Antonelli here, former major league player, first round pick, and college coach. With this course, we're gonna show you exactly, step by step, how to generate power, develop bat speed, and enhance swing mechanics. Regardless of your hitter's age, this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level.